Zip Tie Domes presents How to Understand Geodesic Dome Frequency An Explanation of 2V, 3V, 4V, 5V, and 6V domes. Let's start with the short answer. Dome frequency is represented by the letter V. 2V is shorthand for 2 frequency. A 2V dome is a 2 frequency dome, and a 3V dome is a 3 frequency dome. The higher the V or frequency, the more triangles there are in a geodesic dome. Here are some examples. This is a 1 frequency schematic in a 1 frequency dome. A 2 frequency schematic in dome. A 3 frequency dome. 4 frequency. 5 frequency, 6 frequency dome. Now here is the long answer. Almost all geodesic domes are based on the icosahedron, but geodesic domes can be made from other platonic solids such as the dodecahedron, the octahedron, or the tetrahedron. The icosahedron is a geometric solid that has 20 sides or faces. Each face of the icosahedron is made from an equilateral triangle. When the icosahedron has the bottom section removed and is placed on the ground, it becomes a 1V or 1 frequency dome. All of the struts in a 1V dome are the same length. Here is a good way to use a 1 frequency dome as demonstrated by Geodesic Buildings of Malaga, Spain. But the limitations of a 1V dome are a 1 frequency dome is boxy and not very spherical like other geodesic domes. You cannot make a 1 frequency geodesic dome very big and still be strong as a 20 foot wide 1 frequency dome design would need struts over 10 feet long which, which become flimsy at that length. Longer struts are not as strong as shorter struts. The best length for a geodesic dome strut is around 5 feet long, but a 5 feet long strut will only create a 1 frequency dome that is less than 10 feet wide. The answer to building a larger dome with shorter struts is break each of the 1V triangles into smaller triangles through tessellation. Here is an example. Each 1V triangle is broken into smaller triangles through tessellation. Tessellation lets you build a larger dome with shorter struts and makes the dome more spherical. Each tessellation of the original 1V triangle increases the, the dome frequency to the next frequency. To understand this, let's tessellate a 1 frequency dome into a 2 frequency dome. A 1 frequency dome is made up of 15 equilateral triangles. An equilateral triangle means that all the, of the sides of the triangle are the same length. To make a 1 frequency dome into a 2 frequency dome, each triangle in the 1 frequency dome is tessellated into 4 triangles. In addition, the tessellation of a curved geodesic dome surface will result in different lengths for the struts. After tessellation, the blue A struts in the center of the triangle will be longer than the red B struts. And here is the key. The lengths of the edges or struts of the new triangles are changed in a mathematical way to make the dome more spherical. During tessellation, the one frequency edges are subdivided into two edges joined by a vertex. The lengths of the edges are changed so that each new vertex is pushed outward an equal distance from the center of the dome to make the two frequency dome more spherical than the one frequency dome. Here are some examples. A 1 frequency dome has one edge around the face of the original icosahedron. And so a 1 frequency dome is an icosahedron. A 2 frequency dome has two edges for each edge of the original icosahedron, with a new vertex and edges pushed outward. This creates four triangles from each triangle of the original icosahedron. This is how the 2 frequency dome is derived from the icosahedron. 
A three-frequency dome has three edges for each edge of the original icosahedron, with the two new vertices and their edges pushed outward. This creates nine triangles from the original icosahedron triangle. This creates a three-frequency dome from the icosahedron. Tessellating to the fourth frequency creates four edges that are pushed outward in 16 triangles. This creates a four fr frequency dome from the icosahedron. The fifth frequency creates five edges pushed outward in 25 triangles from the original icosahedron triangle. This creates a five frequency dome from the icosahedron. The sixth frequency creates six edges pushed outward and 36 triangles. This creates a six frequency dome from the icosahedron. So here's the secret of how the lengths of the tessellated triangles causes the vertices to be pushed outward into a sphere. The edges or struts on the outside of the tessellated triangles are always shorter than the middle of the triangle. In this two frequency example, the red B struts on the outside of the triangle are only 88% of the length of the blue A struts on the inside of the triangle. For a 16 foot geodesic dome, this means the red struts on the outside would be 4 feet 5 inches in length, while the blue struts on the inside would be 5 feet in length. This difference causes the triangle to curve in three dimensions. The other secret is, each corner of the original icosahedron triangle is part of a five-way connection, which, if flattened, creates a 72 degree angle as 360 degrees divided by five is 72 degrees. The interior angles of the triangle are part of a six-way connection, which normally creates a 60 degree angle as 360 degrees divided by six is 60 degrees. Normally, the sum of the three angles of a Euclidean or flat triangle must equal 180 degrees. But a geodesic dome triangle is being applied to the positive curvature of a sphere and so must follow the rules of spherical geometry, not Euclidean. One rule of spherical geometry is that every triangle applied to the positive curvature of a sphere must exceed 180 degrees. This means that the 60 degree angles in this diagram are really greater than 60 degrees. These 60 plus degree angles along with the 72 degree angles in the corners will cause the triangles to bend away from a flat plane so that the vertices will follow the curved surface of a sphere. So it is a combination of these five-way and six-way connections and their 72 degree and 60 plus degree angles along with the shorter red struts and longer blue struts that will bend each flat icosahedron face towards a three-dimensional curved surface to create a portion of the geodesic dome. Here is a way to imagine this process. This is similar to when you take a flat sheet of paper in the shape of a circle with a pie slice cut out of it. When you move the edges of the pie slice together, the flat paper forms a cone. In the same way, the triangular panel is deformed towards a curved surface as the perimeter struts become shorter than the interior struts, and the five-way and six-way connections are enforced. When the face of an icosahedron is tessellated to the third frequency, an additional yellow strut is added. The shorter red and yellow struts on the outside of the triangle, with the longer blue struts on the inside, this causes the curvature of the triangle. A 4V dome has six different strut lengths. Note that the longer blue struts are in the center and the shorter red and orange struts are on the outer edges. The 5V and 6V domes each require nine different strut lengths with the longer struts in the center of each panel. How to determine the frequency of a geodesic dome? Every geodesic dome, no matter what size or frequency, only has six of these five-way connectors. All the other connections are six-way connections. The six five-way connections represent the corners of one of the faces of the original icosahedron, and the struts between each of these five-way connections are the tessellated edges of the face of the icosahedron. This means by counting the struts between two of the five-way connections in a geodesic dome, you can determine the frequency of any geodesic dome. 
Here are some examples on how to use this technique. Find the first five-way connection on the left, then on the right, then count the number of struts, which tells us that this is a two-frequency dome. Look closely at this dome and see if you can find the five-way connection. Here is one, here, here is another, one, two, three, and a three-frequency dome. A four-frequency dome. A five-frequency dome. Here's a six frequency dome. Now let's take a test. What is the frequency of this dome? Hit the pause button if needed, and the answer will be given at the end of the test. Here is another dome with one of the five way connections under the arm of the man with the hat on the right of the dome. This is a very simple dome with every connection being a five-way connection. This is one of the harder domes to see. Hit the pause button if needed. What is the frequency of this dome? And finally, what is the frequency of this dome? Okay, here are the answers. This is a five frequency dome. This is a two frequency dome. This is a one frequency dome. This is a four frequency dome. This is a six frequency dome. And this is a three frequency dome. Thanks for watching our video. If you have any questions, please call us at 931-858-6892 or go to our website at www.ziptiedomes.com.